Shalom. Welcome back to Hebrew Literacy, Isaiah Dominance. This is a directed immersion through the difficult book of Isaiah. So this lesson is for beginners and advanced alike. If you love the book of Isaiah and you want to master it, you want to dominate that book, this is for you. I know we do it piecemeal, little bite-sized teachings, and I recommend you go back through all the teachings as often as you can, but try to beat me to the answers. Like when I'm about to tell you the meaning of the words and explain it, try to remember that stuff if you truly want to dominate this book. And this is the way to really master your Hebrew. You go through a book again and again and again until it's yours, until you own it. And this book is definitely worth that. But don't be discouraged, please. If you're new on your Hebrew journey, and you find this very difficult, the language of Isaiah is very difficult. The prose sections in other parts of the Bible are much easier where they're just telling a story or something. So anyway, let's get to it. Avinu malkeinu ken hiratzon ki tishlach na birchattecha mi shemai mi ma'al al kol talmidai ta'azer na otam Adonai lil moto ve'enecha loli loli ve'lecha yike kol hakavot all right, here we go. Today we are on Isaiah chapter 3, verse 3. And yeah, I drew some stuff on here. I was recording and then I had a problem with my recording. So, yay, we already have some pre-drawn stuff. Let's have a look. Sachamishim unesufanim veyoaitz vachacham charashim. Okay, sa hamishim. I've labeled that as a construct chain for you. So sa, sa means like captain, prince, leader, etc. So in this case, probably not. It's probably not. Probably not. Uh, sorry, I just noticed my tablet's cracked. How did that happen? It's okay. I think it's the cover, protective cover for the tab. Huh. Yikes. Sa hamishim. A captain of fifties, right? meaning he's over fifty men, like in the military. It can also be a judge who's over fifty, although usually we'd use a different word. But it could be saw, unesu fanim, and they. This is a passive participle of nasa to lift up, so a a lifted up of fanim, of faces. So this is idiomatic for like a nobleman, right? Someone he's basically respected by everybody. The yoites and yoites, a counselor. Vachacham. Charashim. This is another construct chain. So I have a bunch of notes there myself about Septuagint and stuff like that. We probably won't go into. Oh, the crack is bothering me. When did that happen? Bizarre. So, Chacham, Charashim, according to Ibn Ezra, this is like. This is like a, a charas is like an artisan, right? Artisan. So a wise one among the, among artisans, a cunning artisan or artificer. Unevon, pardon, unevon, nevon is also a word. <laughs> unevon, u, and again, the reason this is u here, instead of just v like we have over here, is remember we have our bump schwa rule. Bump schwa. So whenever that first letter is a, a ba, a va, a ma, or a pa, fa, the vav becomes an u. And that's what has happened right here. Oi. Nevon Lachash. We have another construct chain. It would have been Navon, but it's Nevon. The pre tonic comets became a schwa. So 
So Ibn Ezra says that this is that a that a nevon lachash is a charmer. But he goes on to say that even the one who understands it as in charming serpents will be taken away. Right? So even the one who has that power. Some say it is actually an eloquent orator, relating it back to this last word, to mit lachashim, whispering. It could also be one who's knowledgeable. The word here, navon, it comes from bin, beit yodnun, to understand. So it's a passive participle, one who has gained understanding of lachash. So the real question then is, what is lachash? So it gets a bit tricky. Lachash, from lachash, we have the word in Ugaritic, lacheshit, meaning whisper. Or in Syriac, lachashu, with the same meaning. The idea is, it can mean a whisper. Or an incantation. Halot explains it as an incantation against snakes. We find that also in Jeremiah and in Koheleth. It can also have this other meaning of an amulet, although that would not make sense here, right? Usually of seashells and such. So a nevon lachash is probably someone who's knowledge, knowledgeable in whispers. Whispers, of course, being some kind of magical incantation. So let's read it again. Clean up my screen a bit. Oh, that crack keeps distracting me. Sahamishim, <laughs> a officer over 50, officer of 50s, Unesufanim, and one who has been lifted up by faces. Right? The Yorites. So, by the way, that's like a nobleman or something. The Yorites. And a counselor. The Chacham Charashim. So, that's, that's a chain. That's together. Don't, when you're reading it, don't go, The Chacham, long pause, Charashim. We say, The Chacham Charashim. You can actually see by the Mercha, Tepecha accent marks too, that these two guys go together. It's a single thought. And a master artisan. Unevon lachash, and one who has gained knowledge of lachash. Pardon me, here it's with the saluk lachash, whispering, whispering. The master of whispers. Interesting, that's kind of an interesting title. <laughs> Something worth noting, it is possible to translate differently the chacham charashim. This could be, and a wise one of charashim. If we take that from cheresh, number two, meaning like secretly, right? Then this can have the idea of magic or magician, right? So especially since we have it in parallel with one who is knowledgeable of whispering, again, that might be some kind of incantations. We could translate this and a master magician or, or and Sorry, the, the laser point is slow. Come over here. Why are you so slow? And one knowledgeable of incantations. Okay, verse 4. Venatati ne'arim sareihem Sarehem, the ta'alulim yimshulu vam. Vam. Again, sorry, I don't know why my laser pointer is dragging along behind me. <laughs> Computer or network slowing down or something. Okay, not ta tu. Right, so of course the T, that's I. When we have T at the end of the verb, that reminds us of ani. Or Anochi. And the Dagash, that's there in the middle. That is from our noon. The verb was 
Natan. And that final noon assimilated. Went on the inside there. So Natan T became Natat T. But then we have a Vav conversive. So instead of I gave, I assigned, I set, the Vav conversive changes the aspect. That's our little. Time device. Think of it like that. It's messing with the time, messing with the aspect. So I set, I placed, I assigned Na'im. Na'im. Youths, lads from Na'ar, if you remember. If you're strong in the Torah, you might remember in Genesis when Avraham Avinu, he goes to sacrifice his son Yitzchak, the son whom he ohevs, and he brings with him two lads, two na'ars. The tradition teaches us Yishmael and Eliezer. So, Venatati na'arim, so I assigned. Lads, youth. And then we're not, we're missing as here. I would have expected ke, but we don't have the kaf, we don't have as, but it's poetic. So, sarehem. So, we already had sav on the previous slide. So, like chief, leader, prince, it can mean quite literally. So, sarehem, the princes of them as their princes. Their sars, which is cognate to the Russian word tsar, the Russian kind of king. The ta'alulim yimshulu vam. The end. Ta'alulim. <clears throat> what is Ta'alulim? Babes. Babes. Ibn Ezra getting into the morphology explains that the Tav is not part of the root. The root is Ur, Ayan, Vav, Lamed, to be young. And he points out we have, for example, an Olel is a child in Jeremiah 6.11. We also saw that for those of you who are working through the book of Echa, Lamentations with us. We've seen Leil also as a child. Okay. So, and babes, Yim Shalu. Actually, Yim Shalu. The first Yod of the verb tells us it's third person. So it's here, they. The U at the end tells us it's they. So those two things together. They. And it's an imperfect, so that's either going to be a present tense, which doesn't make a lot of sense here, or future, which does make sense. An incomplete action. And I just want to show you where the syllable divides. Whenever you have two schwas in a row in the word, the syllable divides, the syllabification is right between the middle of them. So this is pr pronounced when you're reading it. Yim, shelu. Notice that's a vocal Vocal schwa, schwa there, right? So we have yim. And then this is she. Usually represented by an upside down e. She lu. That's how we break that up. Yim she lu. Yim she lu. Whenever you have two schwas in a row in a single word, the first one is always closing the previous syllable. So it's a closed syllable, meaning ending in a consonant. Yim. That's why we have a short vowel here. And the next one is always beginning the syllable, so it's always going to be vocalized. Eh. Yim shelu. Mashal is the word. Mashal. Not to be confused with a mashal, which is an enigmatic expression or a proverb, like we have the, the book of Mishlei, right? But mashal to rule, to rule. And this verb 
to rule, mashal, it's it requires to rule over. Idiomatically, it requires a bait. So, rule is mashal. And then the over part to rule over when you're using the verb mashal, it expects a bait. Bait. So mashal, be, and then whatever is part of the word after that, whatever your word is, right? And so that is exactly what we have. When you look over here, oops, sorry, that was very strange. So we have the inseparable preposition bait. Okay. That's this guy. See? Right, like we expect. And we have our verb mashal. So yim shalu vam. They will rule over am. Over them. Over bum. Okay. So one more time through. The natati ni'arim. So I have set or I have appointed youths, lads. Boys as Sarehem, Sarehem, the Sarim, the princes of Hem, of them, so their princes. The and Ta'alulim and babes. By the way, this is a dislegomemnon. It only occurs twice in the entire Bible. That's why Ibn Ezra commented on it. And babes, Yimshaluvam, or Yimshalu. <clears throat> Yim shel u vam. Yim shel u vam. Will rule over them. Again, following this rule, mashal requires bait syntactically. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed that recent installment. I will see you next time as we continue our Hebrew dominance. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>